we warmly acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land from which we are coming to you. We pay respect to Elders past and present and all First Nations peoples who have told their stories on these lands for many thousands of years. Hi Mary Ann. It's with great pleasure that I get to present to you today the 2021 Australia Council Rosbauer Award for Community Arts and Cultural Development. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, here we are, Mary Ann. <laughs> Tell me, how would you describe what you do in the arts and the health sector? I wouldn't call myself a conventional artist, but I am an Indigenous midwife. So um, part of my responsibility as an Indigenous midwife is to ensure that um, the people that I connect with are connected with their essence, their true nature, their source and imagination. Being brought up in a, a Western culture where art is often delegated as a profession, not a birthright, um, I see very much my responsibility is to awaken the artist, the creator in every individual. My job is so much more than ensuring the safe arrival of a baby. My role is to ensure um, a woman emerges from that initiation process empowered and transformed. I was just looking at this photograph before. These are um, some of the beautiful belly casts that we presented at the Making Memories. Mm -hmm. We got this grant from Access Arts, NAIDOC was approaching. We employed um, some top great artists, Missy Knox, mm -hmm. Ada Savage. Just some beautiful women came in and supported our mums to, to get in touch with their creativity. So many of these mums um, came to that conversation with these blank belly casts going, I have no idea what to do. I'm not creative at all. Again, they needed that partnership with um, artists of great confidence and experience to help tease that story out. As a midwife, creating the good womb, creating that environment, and then patiently waiting while the story emerged. This is the magic of being in this space. That's beautiful. Um, true magic happens. Can you think of maybe without breaching anyone's confidence, uh, sort of an example of maybe a woman or family that you've supported? One woman um, springs to mind who, and this woman's very dear to my heart, she exemplifies like the stolen generation and the trauma that um, our mob have experienced. She had, had mothered a number of children, which were all removed. This pregnancy that I was involved with, it was so important to her that she actually parent this child. Of course. Mm. We worked with her in a very gentle and sensitive way, not wanting to push her too far. But I felt really strongly that for this pregnancy, because she'd lost so many children to the system, that it was important to have a belly cast on. Mm. And I will never forget when we, we took the belly cast off her, she saw herself as a goddess mm. for the first time. And to see her fall in love with her form mm. and say something absurd like, I've always looked at my boobs down this way and thought it was <laughs> rubbish. And then to look at herself revealing who she really was was one of the highlights of my career. Mm. And it healed something in her that was extraordinary. And I knew I was participating in something sacred and awesome that transcended anything that I'd experienced in all my years of, of medical work. Mm. And part of my responsibility as a midwife is to say to mothers, you might have had a really challenging time getting here mm. and bringing this baby through, but remember who you are. Um, my job is really simple when I'm given an opportunity to create the the appropriate environment, then all I have to do is sit back, hold that space and watch people just emerge in the most incredibly awesome way possible. Yeah. When was it that you first found your way into kind of discovering the arts and health movement in Australia and your connections, uh, particularly with the arts and health sector in Queensland? In Western culture, I learned very early at school that I wasn't any good at art because mm. I was told I wasn't any good at art. I think I in, did the incorrect inversion on a potato print <laughs> and, um, 
And that was the end of my artistic career. I just thought, oh, I'm no good at art. <laughs> Took that on board and moved on. And then in medicine, there was so few opportunities to embrace creativity. It was a separate profession. Mm -hmm. I worked with uh, a very innovative psychiatrist, Dr. Stan Groff at that time, whose way of encouraging this material to the surface was using art. Um, at the end of the time, as a midwife, when I pieced that entire pictorial journey together, truly that was the beginning of my enchantment with art. And this is what convinced me that um, art is an imperative. It is absolutely the foundation of health and well-being that we are not going to get well until we fully partnership um, with the creative industries. And in fact, I would go a step further and say they need to lead us um, into a whole new paradigm of wellness. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's an awesome <laughs> answer. So, Marion, can you tell me about this image, Grandmother Dreaming? Is this from your Perinatal Dreaming series? By the time this image came through, um, I really felt I'd consolidated that connection with my ancestors and my great-great-grandmother and felt deeply respectful of the wisdom that she was sharing with me. And one of the greatest gifts my great-great-grandmother gave to me was patience, um, stamina and endurance, that when I first started midwifery um, and art as well, it was like, let's do this, do this fast and move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. and to learn to be patient and to wait, to give a woman that implicit message that however long it takes you, I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I'm with you no matter what. That level of commitment is something that's rare these days, but I've seen artists do it um, again and again and again. So Marianne, obviously, um, as we all know, working the arts, there's the good times and there's the hard times. Trying to uh, exist as an Indigenous midwife in a more holistic way within the narrow constructs of the current medical paradigm. I found that particularly challenging. And for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, if we want to reconcile what's happened, first we have to reconcile the madness within ourselves, and then we need to show up and do whatever's necessary to bring them home. A final question. What does winning the Ros Bauer Award from the Community Arts and Cultural Development uh, peers and uh, section of the Australia Council mean for you in your career at this point in time? For me, it was a rebirth. Mm -hmm. It's time for me to stand up and say, we have to reprioritize art and creativity. I can't underestimate the importance of awards like this. Ros Bauer, what an extraordinary human being. And we need to look at the history and these people that have gone before us and, and what they've achieved with so many different recipients. Um, every individual can identify with someone, mm -hmm, Totally, can um, see somebody as a hero and think, I mm -hmm. could do that too. Absolutely. So you cannot underestimate the importance of mm -hmm. these awards. Mm -hmm. We look forward to seeing what comes over the next year and then further into your career. And to know that there's just so many artists, I think, really keen to be able to think about how we can start making work in the way that you're talking about. So thank you so much for today and congratulations on winning this award. Oh, thank you, Lenny. No worries.